Some people claim that asking for help other than God is considered as polytheism. Do such individuals avoid going to the doctor when they are ill? Wouldn't seeking someone other than God be also considered as polytheism? The act of going to the doctor is a type of seeking help from a specialist even though they are not saying it by their tongue. Should they not ask any question or seek any help from anyone other than God be also considered as shirk? Should they not eat because they helping themselves is another act of shirk by any means other than God? This is why and this is where the concept and the aspect of tawassul beseeching comes in place. Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. These questions will be answered in tonight's program as me and my dear guest Sayyid Ja'far Qazwini will tackle them and see why do some people misunderstand the concept of tawassul. So respected viewers, without further ado, let's welcome my dear guest Sayyid Ja'far Al Qazwini. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidina. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Alhamdulillah. I hope you are well. Alhamdulillah, I'm very well. Thank you very much for having uh, me. Thank you very much for, for coming tonight. Sayyidina, this is a very controversial topic if you want to look at it. Some people uh, look at beseeching Allah through other means as shirk. And uh, uh, in some ways, it does become as shirk. And in other ways, when you do look at it and in a different perspective, it's a way uh, or a means of reaching to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in different paths. So, uh, Sayyidina, what is tawassul? I mean, in other words, what does beseeching mean? What does it entail? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala ishraf al-anbiya wal mursaleen, Sayyidina wa nabiyina wa habibi qulubina abil qasim al-Mustafa Muhammad wa ahl baytih al-Tayibin al-Tahirin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. As you have said uh, rightly, Brother Ahmed, uh, the issue is very controversial mm -hmm. to the point that the followers of Ahlul Bayt السلام, have been accused of heresy and blasphemy mm -hmm. and that is tantamount to shedding their blood and killing them as you can see in yes. today's world. Yep. One justification for that is that these are uh, blasphemous, they are they're polyth polytheist and they are equating partners uh, and other entities beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. Now, the first question, what is besieging? What is this tawassul that yes, we are talking? In a very simple word, it is when you lobby some entity in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need mm. something from the Almighty. Either you need forgiveness, you need your prayers to be accepted, you need your position to be elevated, you need that the Almighty forgive your sins, or help you with your hardship, with your difficulties, and fulfill your need, you lobby some entity. Mm -hmm. You ask some entity so other an than agent. Allah, an agent and an intermediate, mm -hmm. that he will intercede, he or she will intercede in your behalf in front of the Almighty. Mm -hmm. The whole concept is asking some other entity for your favor in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. Now the question is why this is considered in the eyes of particular group and yeah. that is the Salafis and Wahhabis is considered to be shirk. shirk. What is oh. the reason? And here we have to ask this question to them. What, is it? what part of this is considered to be blasphemy? Mm -hmm. Is it the fact that I am asking some other entity or seeking the help and assistance of other entity that yeah. Allah? Yeah. Then Allah subhanahu is this act or the act of a humiliation when I, and subordination when I beg the, that entity. When I say, O oh, Master Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or when I say, O oh, Hussein, Ya Hussein, then is that considered to be a, an act of a blasphemous or the act of blasphemy or the fact that I consider them, they are able to perform that act. You see, mm. there are three things. Yeah. Number one is just mere asking. Second, is the act of humility, the humiliation that I show when I go to their present, to their shrines, for example. Yes. And third, the belief that I have in my mind that they are able to do something mm -hmm. in my behalf in front of Allah subhanahu yes. wa ta'ala. And we need to answer all of these the three things, the three concepts. Mm -hmm. So when, when you ask, a, 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 you know, the, the opposite side, when you ask the, the foe, why would you consider the follower of Ahlul Bayt He would say, when you beseech someone else and you're praying, basically you're doing two things. Number one, you're lengthening the distance 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very close to you. You don't need to find an intermediary here. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ I am a very, you know, in a very yeah, short yeah. distance. Yeah. You can whisper, you, you can even keep it in your heart yeah. without even articulating it. So when you put a, an, 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 an intermediate, basically you have, you have increased the distance and that's illogical. That's number one. Second, you have equated a partner. You're considered this partner is as strong, as powerful as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. And here is the whole problem. Here is the whole issue. Either they say it out of not understanding the fact mm -hmm. when we say besieging, or they say it just because, you know, we, the followers of Ahlul Bayt, have taken this path and they have to disagree with us. Now, as you have said rightly, if you go to the doctor, to the specialist, and you seek his assistance mm -hmm. in healing yourself, where, the, where does the healing come from? Ultimately, it comes from? From God. From Allah subhanahu mm -hmm. wa ta'ala. Does anybody doubt this fact? Mm -hmm. If anyone doubts this fact, then that's another story. Then we would consider that person to be a blasphemous. That, course, that person to be a polytheist. Mm -hmm. But when you recognize that the healing is coming from the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but that doesn't apply until you take the natural course. Mm -hmm. You take an intermediary. You take a medium here. That medium is either the doctor himself, the drugs, the surgery that he does, or sometimes unconventional mm -hmm. prayers. You pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your healing. At any rate, you need to seek an intermediary. Mm -hmm. Either okay. a prayer, or a doctor, or a drug, or some sort of surgery or medical operations mm -hmm. and procedures which are basically, they're all intermediary. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference between this type of a problem and me going to the shrine of the Imam or the mm -hmm. Prophet, peace, peace be upon him, and besieging him in my, in my, in my uh, ordeal, in my, I mean, in my need? Yeah, but uh, what's missing from, from their picture, what they're missing from their own picture, is that uh, a scholar states that if we get help from anybody, we do it with the understanding that he by his own will cannot help us yet. He cannot benefit unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes to. How can you comment on that? Absolutely. We, what we believe in that there is no entity that can be parallel to the Almighty Allah subhanahu mm -hmm. wa ta'ala. Whether the Prophet or the Imam or any other entity, mm -hmm. they do not act by themselves. Rather they act in the line of, of, of Allah subhanahu mm -hmm. wa ta'ala because God has ordered because God have asked and here what, what, what we need to tackle these three issues that they have raised yes. number one whether there is an entity beside God mm -hmm. yes absolutely you can go to entity beside God I will give you an example mm -hmm. Yaqub Jacob went to blind for missing his son for 40 years now when Yusuf found his brothers or they found him and they were returning back to Canaan. What did Yusuf gave them as a healing agent to their father? Was a piece of a cloth. A piece of cloth and a shirt. His shirt. Yeah. He asked them, take my shirt and bring it to my father. My father will come, you know, with farsight. With, 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 he, 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 will, he, will, he will return his, you know, he will regain his, his vision again. A piece of a cloth, a, a shirt had become you know, an agent here, an of agent of, of, healing. of healing. Why? Because it was with the order of Allah Definitely. subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because it was in the line of the command of Allah. Because this is what he has permissed. Mm -hmm. Now, if Yusuf, God forbid, has done this in front of the Wahhabis and the Salafis, they would consider him a blasphemous and a polytheist. Yeah. Luckily, he didn't exist at, they mm -hmm. didn't exist at that time. You see, that's, that, that's the whole issue. That's Why? Issue. Because he went to something. Have you ever heard an ophthalmologist mm -hmm. cure people's eye with a piece of a cloth? No. No. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with his will, Definitely. he will put the strength and the ability of healing in that agent, which mm -hmm. is piece of a cloth, mm -hmm. which is more important, which has more value, a piece of a cloth or someone like the Prophet, peace be upon him, someone that God 
you know, is considering profit is the best of all creature. Mm -hmm. Who has more value in the front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Obviously, the prophet. the prophet. You know what I mean? It's, 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 it's no-brainer. So you don't need to think question. about this one. So that's, that's number one. Mm -hmm. Second, they tell you the act of humility. Mm -hmm. When you go and weep and you cry or you kiss the, the, the doorstep of the imam and you kiss the shrine of the imam, this showing the act of humiliation. They tell you this is haram. I tell them beautiful. Let's go back again to the ayat, to the verses. When you say humility, you mean dhul. In Arabic, means dhul. Mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you, show a humility and dhul to your parents. Lahuma janahad dhulli min al -rahm. The lowest level of humility. The lowest level of it. I mean, if you can go down and kiss their foot, you better do it. You wow. cannot shout. You cannot even give a very strange look to your parents. Always showing your humility and humbleness to your parents. And this is narrated in the Holy Quran. Where is the problem? Again, they will come and say, where is the it, uh, I will come back to it. Just let me tackle the third issue. Yes. Then we'll come back and say, where is the problem? Mm -hmm. The third one, they say whether he has the power or he doesn't have the power. Mm -hmm. They tell you he may have the power when he's alive, but now he's dead. The prophet is dead. He loses the, the power. We tell them in your prayers, in tashahud, when you say, Assalamu alayka ayyuhan nabiyu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, when you salute the prophet, does the Prophet listen to you or he doesn't listen to you? Does he? If he doesn't listen to you, then mm -hmm. you're doing something, just wasting your time. Out of the ordinary. Out of the ordinary. You're wasting your time for saying something that is wasted. You're saying, Assalamu alaikum while he's, while he's not hearing you. So why you do it at first place? If they say, no, he listens to you, then he, if he has the power to listen, he also has the power to intercede. Wow. I will give you a couple examples. Mm -hmm. The story that their sahah, their books, especially Bukhari and Muslim, talk about this. The story of establishing the five daily prayers. How did the five daily prayers happen? Mm -hmm. What is the story? Yeah. They, told, they tell you that the Almighty has assigned 50 daily prayers for each Muslim. By the Prophet, 50, 50. Now, who did intercede in our behalf? Who did intercede in our behalf? Who? It was Musa, alayhi salam. On the day of Mi'raj, on the day of ascension, when the Prophet was ascended, you know, first he, was, he had Isra, mm -hmm. moved to Bayt al-Quds, Bayt al-Maqdis. In Bayt al-Maqdis, he performed the prayers while the Prophets, the other Prophets were behind him. No prophet at the time was alive. So what does it mean that all the prophets performed the prayer behind, behind him? Meaning their souls. Their bodies is dead, but their souls were alive. So were they alive. performed prayers behind the prophets. So they were able to act. That's number one. Second, when he, descend, when he ascended, he met the soul of Musa alayhi mm -hmm. Moses told him, wait, wait, Muhammad, stop. God has assigned 50 prayers for you. Tell your God that your nation is unable to do that. Of course, we don't buy this story. Wow. But, but we, we are hold them, holding them responsible for, 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 for this. Wow. They would say <laughs> that Musa mm -hmm. asked the Prophet to bargain with God. So wow. the Prophet came and bargained. He said, uh, oh my Lord, you know, my, my people cannot perform 50 prayers. Then he said, okay, make it 10 or make it 20, some, some number. Again, he comes back, Musa tell him, no, doesn't work. Go back and tell him he's not, they're not able. He goes back again and he tells him, you know, they're, they're not able. He brings them to 10, then eventually to five and they settle on five daily prayers. Really? Meaning that Musa taught the prophets how to bargain or basically intercede in the behalf and while he was dead. So why was the Prophet considered the best Prophet if he's bargaining with God? That's another story that they I are mean, bringing. I mean, that's another topic, but, 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 what, that's what, but, but what we want to pinpoint here is that the fact that they believe somehow 
that Musa has interceded in behalf of the Muslim Ummah, Muslim nation, to reduce the number of prayers to five daily. While he was dead, he was not alive at the time. So he had the power, he exerted the power. Then why someone like the Prophet cannot exert his power and help me with, 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 with my needs, with my desires, and if, if I would ask. Now let's go back and talk about what, what is the problem. Mm -hmm. Is, is, what is, is that? Problem? Yeah. What, what, I mean, what, why would they say this? What is, what is their own problem? Mm -hmm. You see, Brother Ahmed, when they tell you that God is a close, absolutely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a close to us. Mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is closer to us than our jugular veins. That's no question about that. This is a fact. Also, the Almighty has said, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قريب. قَرِيبٌ I am very close to human. So basically, you don't need to ask. But what are they missing? Wow. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is close to us. But are we close to Him? Why do they say this? Because they are anthropomorphist which means that they give physical attribute to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me demonstrate this. I am closer to you, I'm close to you, therefore you close to me. This is a, a vice versa relationship. Yeah. Why? Because you are a physical body and I am a physical body. The, the, the more I move toward, toward left, the closer I become to you. Why? Because you're a physical body. You have appearance, you have this body, and the more I move toward the le left, the closer I get to you. Mm -hmm. The same thing with God. Wow. If God is so close to me, then it must be that I'm also close to Him. And here's their problem. Because they look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a physical body. They don't look at this closeness, this proximity as a spiritual, as a spiritual proximity. Wow. You put an alim, a scholar, Albert Einstein, mm -hmm. with someone who's a laborer. Wow. Who's put them next to each other. Are they close to each other? They may sit next to each other, but their world's indifference. This guy in East, this guy in West, there is no comparison between the two. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is close to me and to you, mm -hmm. and there is no doubt about that, does that also mean that I am and you are closer to him? No, it doesn't mean that. We're, I can give you an example. The president of the country at any moment can summon anyone in his country, summon any citizen. The President of the United States can ask the authorities, the police department, the CIA, the FBI to bring anyone and interrogate them. Mm -hmm. But can that citizen see the President at any time that he wants? No, cannot. No, cannot. Therefore, you need to reach a closeness and that's the spiritual closeness. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you need to have an intermediary. Basically, Brother Ahmed, for every single act, there are three components. One is the cause of the action. Second is the subject, where the action takes place on. Mm -hmm. The third one is the intermediary. I can give you a few examples. Look at the light, the bulb. Mm -hmm. This bulb, is the light is on because there is an electricity. The electricity is the cause of light, right? We, the subject, we see the light. But the condition is that in this bulb, there must be a tiny wire that hooks this side of the, the bulb with this one. This is the intermediary. If you cut this wire, no matter how much electricity you, you generate and pour in this bulb, it doesn't work. Why? Oh. Because there is an intermediary here. Wow. You need to fix this intermediary. You need to put this one. Assume fire. Fire is a burning agent. Mm -hmm. You place this paper on fire, it will set on fire. Mm -hmm. Now, the cause of burning is fire. The subject that is get fired is this paper. But the condition is that you need it to get it close. You keep the fire here, you keep the paper here. Does it burn it? No. You need to bring them closer to you. You bring them to together. When you bring them together, this gets burned. Mm -hmm. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who's the one who take our lives away? Allah. Allah. Allah yatawaffal anfus hina mawti. When the time is ripe, we all die. By whom? By the Almighty. 
But, some but then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he himself in the Holy Quran says, yeah. He put an agent here, put an intermediary, yeah. so I'm going to revoke this person's life. Is that considered shirk as well? If somebody says, Malakul Maut came and took my life, is he making a shirk? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying this. Yeah. And that's you very see? interesting. I mean, very, very interesting. But Sayyidina, I would like to mention something before we go into a short break, is that you've mentioned various interesting points and, and key points uh, within your speech. But you've mentioned one that uh, really caught me. It's that uh, in the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to Prophet Muhammad. He says, you mentioned the verse, the holy verse. He says, and when my, when my servants ask you concerning me, indeed I am near. I respond to the invocation of the supplicant when he calls upon me. I'm going to ask you the question, but we'll answer inshallah after the short break. If God is so near, why do we have to use other agents, other intermediary, intermediaries, agents, uh, the prophets, the imams, to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we'll answer that after the short break. So respected viewers, stay tuned because this is very interesting. I mean, uh, we, uh, the episode has become very interesting, uh, revolving around why do we have to supplicate, uh, or sorry, why do we have to use agents to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if Allah states in the Holy Quran that He is near. So this will be after the break. Ali, 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 Mawlaya, Ya Ali. Ali, 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 Mawlaya, Ya Ali, Ya Hayda, Ya Hayda, Ya Hayda. Ali, 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 تشري بدماي يا علي حمل حما فرحتك هاي عالشفاه الباسمة هذا عيد بدم وريدي خط ديدي يا هلك حيدار ساقي الكوثر ساقي الكوثر يا هلا بحيدار علي 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 مولاي يا علي 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 وانت عيناي واغلى من ضي النظر تزهي بسماي قمر يا فارس مضر وانت رجواي بالشدايد وتحضر انت ظخر بدم تسري وهذا عمر بدربك تنثر فدوى يا حيدار فدوى يا حيدار دربك تنثر علي 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 مولاي يا علي 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 مولاي يا علي يا حيدا يا حيدا يا حيدا علي علي ليلة تفرح تضحك بوجه البضة والعطر فاح من عبير المرتضى والمحب صاح كل منافق نرفضه احنا شيعة هاي بيعة نضل نطيع على من تغير والعشق Welcome back respected viewers uh, Before the break we discussed several issues regarding uh, who to beseech and who to use to beseech to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we also discussed the problem why some individuals uh, claim uh, that Shia Muslims uh, are somewhat um, mushrikeen, you know, disbelievers, polytheists. Uh, but uh, my dear guest, me and my dear guest, uh, Sayyid Ja'far Qazwini, have tackled this issue uh, in the first half of this episode by revealing some of uh, the answers to the, you know, the controversial questions that are out there. Uh, but welcome back and welcome back, Hay uh, Sayyidna. Uh, before the break, I Last raised question. A, a question. I'm going to repeat the question mm, sure. and repeat the verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the, in the Holy Quran. When talking to Prophet Muhammad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, And when my servants ask you concerning me, indeed I am near, I respond to the invocation of the supplicant when he calls upon me. If God is so near, 
Why do we have to beseech someone in order to get to him? Thank you. Couple, three things. Number one, <clears throat> let's go back again. Let's look at our acts as the followers of Ahl al-Bayt when we go to the shrine of Imam Hussein mm -hmm. or the shrine of the Prophet. Yes. When we go and beseech the Prophet and we pray, do we keep in mind that we are praying to the Almighty but through him or no? Mm -hmm. Or we consider him as an independent? If we consider the Prophet or Imam Hussein or as any other person as an independent, this is shirk. Yeah. Meaning that they independently, without the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the permission of God, they act upon our needs and fix them. This is considered to be shirk. Mm -hmm. But when we go, we have in mind that they are close to Allah and we are asking the Almighty through them. Meaning that I am going to Allah, but through them. Is this a clear now? Is, yes. is, 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 is this clear? Mm -hmm. Basically, when I say, oh, the Prophet, help me, for example, with my sickness, basically I am saying, oh, the Prophet, help my situation in front of your Lord, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to help cure my sickness. This is what I meant. This so is basically. A stage of intercession it's in between. A, only, but, but I am asking the Almighty, but, but to through, through. through the Prophet. Keep this in mind. Yes. Go back to this ayah. What does the ayah says? Mm -hmm. says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيب look at, the, look at the sequence. If my servants ask you about me, then immediately the Pro Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِنِّي I, I am available. Asking mm -hmm. and then coming back. I want to contrast this verse from the rest of the verses when people would ask the Prophet, you see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for example, يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْأَهِلَّ قُلْ هِيَ مَوَاقِيتِ يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْمَحِيضِ قُلْ هُوَ أَذَنْ لِلنِّسَاءِ يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْيَتَامَ قُلْ إِصْلَاحٌ When they ask you, you say, you repeat to them. But in the only verse, that the word قُلْ didn't come is this ayah. Which means when people, all oh the prophets, when people come to you and ask me through you, I am available. So if we want to keep a point in mind, I mean, uh, God, let's say, billah, if He sent Prophet Muhammad to give us a message, couldn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the message directly? Instead of some sending someone from his own nur, who he created from from his own uh, light, come and you know send and deliver us to the message, is it not considered a sign of the, the Almighty is powerful? Anything to do, mm -hmm. he you know he's capable of doing anything, yeah. but he did natural causes, and things have to take their natural courses. If you want to get healed, you have to take medications. Mm -hmm. If you want to have children, you have to get married and then you have to have intercourse with your wife in, to, in order for you to have a baby. Mm -hmm. You see, if you, want to, if you want to seek a job and get a good job, then you have to educate yourself. You have to take a, you know, a classes and university and graduate and then you become... So, so yeah. these are the natural causes. If you want to eat a fruit, you have to plant a seed and grow it for six months, one year, two years, until it becomes a tree and becomes fruitful a tree, then you will eat that fruit. These are natural courses. For asking the Prophet, peace, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us the right direction. He is saying, implying in this ayah, all oh, you the people, go to the Prophet and ask about me. Do, do, yes. do, do you see the point? سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي He didn't tell, tell him, go tell them. Immediately he says, فَإِنِّي قَرِيب Meaning when they come and ask you, the Prophet will say, Oh Muhammad, oh the Prophet, intercede in our, in our behalf in front of Allah. I am available, I am here. You see the catch? Mm -hmm. Still it is within the Prophet, within the Imams, within those entities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, the Almighty is close. It's definitely close. But remember, you need to have this intermediary. The intermediary is always there. Even when you worship, when, when, when you whisper, you say, oh God, help me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, assume a stranger, a stranger come and ask for 
a favor from you. You don't know him. You may help him or you may not. But if your father comes and tell him, this is my friend. Oh, yes. Your cousin comes and say, you know, I know this guy. This is a nice guy, decent guy. Wouldn't help? Wouldn't yeah. that help? Mm -hmm. It's the same manner. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows us. There is no question for, for us being estranged to Allah. Mm -hmm. But the fact that someone beloved, like the Prophet, peace be upon him, like Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, when they intercede in our behalf, things get expedited. Mm -hmm. Now I give you a couple examples in the, in the Holy Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ إِنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ جَاءُوكَ You the Prophet, جَاءُوكَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا اللَّهِ وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمُ الرَّسُولِ لَوَجَدُوا اللَّهَ تَوَّابَ الرَّحِيمَ When they want to repent, they come to you the Prophet, they ask for forgiveness, and you the Prophet ask for forgiveness, then God will forgive them. Isn't Allah close? Yeah. Why do they have to go to the Prophet? Yes. Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala direct people, tell them go to the Prophet, mm -hmm. get his forgiveness, then I will forgive you. Wouldn't he be able to say, come directly, directly to, me? to me? When we repent, when we say, astaghfirullah, doesn't go all the way to the, to, to the Almighty and he would forgive us? Definitely. But why he's putting the Prophet why here? Is he putting the prophet? First is to show the significance of the Prophet, that the Prophet is no ordinary person. It's someone that our life depends on him. Our guidance depends on him. Our safety depends on him. Our success depends on him, whether he's alive or he's dead. Mm -hmm. A second, he's an intermediary. He takes it close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, the Almighty, and it, this, is, this is a very weak example, but if we want to demonstrate, to demonstrate it, it's like a lieutenant and a captain. The captain is on the top. The comrades, the basic soldiers, yeah. they go to the to lieutenant. The lieutenant will send the message to the captain, and the captain will accept it. This is how it is. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the Almighty system, it works this way. Not only that, about Ahl al Bayt, mm -hmm. who's more important, the Prophet or Ahl al Bayt? Or no, Hassan and Hussein? Is there, any, is there any debate on this? Is there any question that the no. Prophet is more important? No. But look what, the, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. It says, O oh, you, the Prophet, Sometimes, even you, the Prophet, the best creature on the face of this planet or on the face of this universe, still you need the prayers of Fatima and Ali and Hassan and Hussein in order for your prayers to be accepted. Wow. Here. فَمَنْ حَاجَّكَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَكَ this is, this is in regards to the event of Mubahala. I have to give a little introduction. What is Mubahala? Mubahala is when two parties, two opposing parties, they pray to the Al Almighty to send his wrath and damnation on the opposite side. Basically, cursing each other, but in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one person would say, I, I ask the Almighty to put his wrath on you. The other one says, no, I ask the Almighty to put his wrath on you. Cursing. And to see which one in the form of a prayer, mm -hmm. the Almighty tells the Prophet, teaches him. He says, in such incident, what do you need to do, the Prophet? فَمَنْ حَاجَّكَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ فَقُلْ تَعَالَوْ نَدْعُ أَبْنَاءَنَا وَأَبْنَاءَكُمْ You bring your children, and I bring my own children. وَنِسَاءَنَا وَنِسَاءَكُمْ you bring, I bring my women, and you bring your own women. وَأَنفُسَنَا وَأَنفُسَكُمْ our soul, soulmates, and your soulmates. Then, then we raise our hand and we ask the Almighty to put the curse on the other opposing party. All narrators say that the Prophet brought Hassan and Hussein and Fatimah al Zahra and Ali ibn Abi Talib, who happened to be his soulmate. Then he said to his family, When I start praying, and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you raise your hand and say Ameen. Then he said, Allahumma inna haulai ahli bayti wa hamati. Yuhzunini ma yuhzunuhum wa yufrihuni ma yufrihuhum. Then he started to say the dua. Asking who? Hassan and Hussein and Fatima and Ali ibn Abi Talib to say Ameen. To support him in his supplication. Couldn't the Prophet do it by himself? 
wouldn't he be valuable by himself to go and ask the Almighty Definitely. for assistance? He would. But why subhanahu wa ta'ala included Hassan and Hussein and Fatima and Ali ibn Abi Talib? So me and you can and come to this holy shrine here Definitely. and ask for their intercession. As a matter of fact, just to add upon your point, I mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah the Almighty, He states in the Holy Quran, وَابْتَغُوا إِلَيْهِ الْوَسِيلَةِ And seek an intermediary, uh, in, intermediary? intermediary uh, to him, to, to God. So right. there, there has to be something in between to intercede because uh, as Imam al-Sadiq, peace be upon him, states that in, in a supplication, that my sins have brought me further from away, f away from you to accept my, my supplications. So we need someone in the middle to intercede for us so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can accept our prayers, can you know, uh, basically help us and guide us uh, th through this life. And, and, that, and that's what we need. And, and, and here we have to elaborate. You see, the problem is that people don't pay attention. Mm -hmm. This intermediary, sometimes a human being, sometimes an, uh, an object. Yeah. Sometimes it's, it's, it, it's a time, a specific time. Like Laylatul Qadr, on the day of destiny, on the night of destiny, night of Qadr, on regular nights you perform one prayer, you get this much of rewards. But on the same night of Al-Qadr, night, the night of destiny, you do the same prayer, but you get the reward more than 1,000 months performing that single prayer. Wow. For example, let's say that you, 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 you get $10 reward for, for a single prayer, just, just for the mm -hmm. heck of it. On the night of Qadr, you multiply this 10 by 30, that becomes a 300. Multiply it by 1,000 and more, $300,000. This $10 becomes $300,000. What did you pray? This is for a single prayer that you perform. Uh -huh. What I'm trying to say is that sometimes a time becomes an intermediary. Yes. Sometimes an object becomes a... a, a for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاتَّخِذُوا مِنْ مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مصلح. When you go to Hajj and perform your rituals, Hajj rituals, then you need to do, after you circulate the Kaaba, you need to perform your prayers. From where? Behind Maqam Ibrahim. That is an object. You need to perform your prayer there. Why? Some people say why. Well, there are a few things that we don't understand. You know, the metaphysical world is beyond our reach. We cannot make the connection, but we have to take it by belief because mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And we have to believe in ghayb. We have to believe in the non-seen, in, in, the, non in the metaphysical world. But that's one reason. The other one is to make a monument for Ibrahim. Mm -hmm. Ibrahim deserved to be mentioned, deserved to be recalled and you know, memorialized by, 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 by the Muslims. The same thing with the Prophet. Mm -hmm. Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants this intermediary to work. Sometimes to signify the position of the mm -hmm. Prophet. To signify the position of Ahlul Bayt. To signify the position of Ali ibn Abi Talib. To tell people Ali ibn Abi Talib is not merely a Sahaba, a companion of the Prophet. Not merely a cousin of the Prophet. He's himself. He himself and he has this holy position that you can resort to him take refuge to him and he will get you closer to Allah mm -hmm. subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alongside of this, I know we have a couple of minutes left, Sure. Uh, but alongside of this, uh, I know we're going off topic with this, but why did Allah command uh, the angels to prostrate to Adam? I mean, since, you know, is, isn't that considered shirk? As, as the, the angels prostrate to Adam, shouldn't they prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Absolutely, this is the question. If you consider this a prostration, as an act of polytheism, then the only true person who performed the prayer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shaitan. Because shaitan says, I didn't bow, I didn't prostrate to anyone but you. Mm -hmm. So the only one who's muwahid is shaitan. Wow. Is shaitan. What does that tell you? Tell you that I or you or the Salafi and Wahhabi or shaitan cannot create our own philosophy of worship. You have to follow. You see, I cannot go and say, look, I don't believe in such, I need to perform the prayer in this way. Shaitan came to the Almighty mm -hmm. and told him, Ya Rab, O Lord, you excuse me from prostrating to Adam, I will perform a prostrate for you 
that will take more than 6,000 years. I will do a prostrate that no one, no done. creature have ever done this. The Almighty told him, Ya no. Shaytan, Ya Iblis, I want you to pray for me the way that I like, not the way you please. Wow. Here is not a matter of, of, of opinion, matter of pleasing. Because you love to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this way, then you have to do it. You have to follow the footstep of the Prophet, the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. When he tells you do it this way, you have to do it this way. You see many Muslims in the, in the Hajj rituals, they would consider the Sa'i between Safa and war Marwa act of blasphemy. They say two stones, two mountains on the time of Jahiliyyah were all mounted with, with, with idols. Why do we have to, you know, pace and go between those two mountains? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna safa wal marwata min sha'a'ir Allah. Your brain is this much. You don't know the whole meaning. You don't see the whole picture. These are part of the divine rituals. You need to adhere yourself to those. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have come to the uh, end of, of the show, Sayyidina. I would like to thank you. But uh, I've gathered uh, a conclusion if you will, from our discussion here, is that if one calls Prophet Muhammad or Imam Ali or the rest of the Imams uh, for help, it is in fact he is calling upon Allah the Almighty for help through intermediary, uh, intermediary uh, of the Prophet or the Imams. He does not, he does that to understand that the Prophet or the Imams do not have any independent power as you mentioned. They're not independent other than God. Absolutely. They're, uh, they're their agents to Allah, if you will. In our tashahud, just to uh, yes. say this, when we say, we say, وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ He's first, he's a slave of Allah mm. subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has no power, no will, without the Almighty Allah. He cannot be an independent source, mm. as, 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 as the Wahhabis accusing us. Mm -hmm. We don't look at him as an independent Allah. Mm -hmm. we, we look at him in the line mm -hmm. of the order. The same thing that Isa alayhi salam, Jesus used to do. Jesus used to create birds, resurrect the dead, heal the sick. But with whose permission? With Allah subhanahu when wa ta'ala. When they said Inni you are lakum min hayat, min al -tayr, al -tayr, fa fi fa bi It becomes bird with the permission of Allah, Allah. subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, the same thing. The Prophet intercede in our behalf for what for the for with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is intercession you know they tell you there is no intercession Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says there is no intercession but but to certain individuals la yamlikuna shafa'a illa man ittakhadha 'inda ar-rahman 'ahda not everybody can 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 be an interce interceding agent there are only few, few. and those are chosen, chosen by divinely Allah. chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Thank you for concluding uh, the show. Uh, Sayyidina, thank you very much for joining us tonight. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, accept uh, this, uh, whatever we have presented to Ahl Bayt alayhi salam, and to raise awareness to the, uh, I wouldn't consider them to be, you know, severely ignorant, but they, they are ignorant. The people who do not, um, you know, understand the intercession of Prophet Muhammad and the Imams. Thank you very much once again for joining us. Respected viewers, thank you very much for joining us tonight. It is significant to touch upon these facts and if you didn't get the chance to view uh, this episode and see why it is important to supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the means of Ahlul Bayt for them to intercede for us on the Day of Judgment. So if you didn't get the chance to view this episode, it will be uh, inshallah uploaded to YouTube at Imam Hussain 3 TV or you can check out our Facebook page also at Imam Hussain 3 TV. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much. God bless you.